This is a Spree Model Network TV and you're watching How To Jetty Programming. Today I'm joined with James who will help us explain a little bit more about how to program your Jetty 2.4 duplex transmitter. Hey guys, James with Jetty USA. I wanted to get with you today and talk to you a little bit about how to program your Jetty Mezzan uh, or Mezzan Light ESC. We get a lot of questions, a lot of email, a lot of phone calls about how to program it and what to program. So we want to kind of go through what you're going to need to know um, before you get started, uh, how to do the programming. We're going to cover both the Jetty Box programming, like, like you see here on the screen, and we're going to take a break a little bit in, switch to the Jetty transmitter and receiver, and show you how to show you how to program on the uh, the transmitter. We'll also show you the difference between the, the Mesin and the Mesin Light Series ESCs. So we'll go ahead and get started. Today we're programming with a Jetty Mesin 90 uh, Opto Edition. Um, we've got that wired up. We're running 6S power system into that. And as you can see, we have plugged the telemetry and data lead, which is your red lead, into the input on the Jetty Box programmer. I'm going to go ahead and turn the Mesin on. And once we get that on, the unit will come up. It'll display the current values. You're going to press the down arrow to get into the programming. First thing that you'll run into is the measurement menu that shows you the actual values and your min max log. So if you're using this and you're not a Jetty Radio pilot and you want to go back and take a look at data after the flight, here's where you would do that. You need the Jetty Box to do that. And you have to do it before you power cycle the aircraft. So as soon as you power cycle and begin a second flight, that original data is lost. So we'll go ahead and go into our program menu. From here, you're going to continue moving right until you see controller. Now, there are a bunch of tabs now, on this level as you're going to work through. We're going to program the controller, the limits, the motor settings, and the uh, BEC settings. So we're going to start at controller. Uh, First thing is, is what you're setting up the controller to do. This Mesa 90 came out of one of our helicopters, so it's currently set up in constant RPM mode. Uh, you can change that to fast response or normal mode. Um, we'll go ahead and set it up in normal. The next tab is our acceleration rate. We have 0 to 110 seconds because we were running it as a helicopter governed uh, mode, so we'll back that 0 to 10 down to about one second. You do that by using the left and right arrows on the screen. Once you have that set, you just continue uh, down arrowing through the menu. Uh, our braking mode is going to be off. Let's say we're setting an aerobatic airplane. If you wanted to change that again, left and right arrows change the parameter from soft, medium, or hard braking. We'll go ahead and set that back to brake off. Your initial point type, you want to leave it auto. The end point you want to leave at 1.9, and your auto inclusion end point you want to leave that at one from 1.9 milliseconds. You don't want to change those. Uh, to go back to the default settings, you simultaneously press the left and right arrows. That'll set it back to all the factory defaults. Uh, once you've gotten to the last setting and you push down again, it takes you back to the top of the menu. We're back to controller, so we'll move on to the setting or to the limits tab. In the limits, you'll things like, see things like what type of battery, what type of amperage, or what type of capacity, your alarm settings and things. So we're going to leave it set up for, for lithium, so lithium ion, lithium poly, or uh, LIFE are all the same. Number of cells, I typically use auto. If you want to do that yourself, use the left and right arrows to change the number of cells or change it back to auto. Uh, the cutoff volts per cell, set that between 3 and 3.2 volts if that's what you typically run. Some people run as low as 2.8 or as much as 4 volts per cell. Depends on how you like to treat your batteries, how often you charge, how good you are at putting your batteries back at storage when you're finished. So, uh, Off voltage is based on the number of cells that it's, it's seeing from the battery and that cutoff voltage. Your alarm voltage, so what, what alarm data is preset into the unit is 5 volts. That's the minimum voltage that, you know, that it's going to see before the alarm goes off. Uh, then we have the temperature protection. You can change that between 150C and 100C and anything in between by using the left and right arrows. Max battery capacity. I generally don't set a max capacity limit in the ESC 
and a capacity alarm. Again, you change that capacity alarm by using the left and right arrows. You can change that from one to 10,000 milliamp hours. Uh, max battery current, I have that set at the preset 120 amperes. You can raise that to no limit. I generally won't do that because then there's no cutoff. I'll typically set it to 120% or 110%, 115% of what the unit's rated for. Cutoff type is slow down. That's what I like to use. If you want to change that, you can use the left and right arrows to change it. And our next thing that we're going to run into here is uh, takes us back to the top for limits. When you get into the motor, here's where you're going to have to have done some homework or you're going to need a computer handy because it is going to ask you. Um, motor direction, you may have to go back in and change uh, unless you know that you've, you've done it backwards, you need to change the rotation. Um, the PWM frequency, uh, you can change that between 8, 6, 8 and 16 kilohertz. Um, the start power is auto plus, so we typically leave that auto plus zero. The timing, you're going to need to know from your motor manufacturer, so you're going to need to look that up on a PC to get that information. And the number of motor poles as well, you're going to need from the motor manufacturer. So look those up either ahead of time or have your uh, PC ready or laptop ready so you can look those up while you're doing your programming. Uh, this will allow you to set a gear ratio. Again, this was used in a helicopter, so we had a one... Uh, a one to a number gear ratio. Uh, if you're using this in a direct drive application, you're just going to set it to one to one. And that's the end of the motor settings. And of course, with the BEC settings, when you go down into it, it just sets the, SB, the, uh, the BEC voltage, uh, which will run from 5 volts up to 8.4 volts. Uh, that's your programming in a nutshell from beginning to end. We're going to go ahead and take a break, switch equipment, set it up on the Jetty transmitter. We'll be right back to you. Okay guys, we're back. We went ahead and changed the unit over to a Jetty receiver uh, and the Jetty uh, DS14 transmitter. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that are using the Jetty radio system along with the Mesons how to do your programming. All of the programming steps are going to be the same as far as the software. Uh, how you access it is different and the piece of equipment you need will be different. Of course, you won't need the Jetty box. You'll only need your transmitter. Uh, you'll need the Meson plugged into your receiver both the power lead and the telemetry lead need to be plugged into the receiver um, and you need to have it set up in the radio. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to program. We're going to hit our menu key and we're going to scroll down to our applications menu in the radio. Select applications menu and scroll to jetty box under applications. Select that. It's going to come up on the screen. It's going to say TX. You're going to have the option of down or right arrows. We're going to go ahead and click that right arrow two times to where we get to MX. We're going to click the down arrow one time. And we're going to click it one more time. That's going to take us into the current settings. We're going to click the right arrow. Uh, that'll give us our ID. And let's see if I can get it to take us back into the main. Once you click that second time on the down arrow, it takes you into the measurement menu. It'll be actual values, min, min, max log as you scroll to the right. As you continue going to the right, just like with the jetty box, you're going to get into the programming. Your controller, your limits, your motor, and your SBAC setup. Um, I'm not going to go through the full programming setup again on the radio because we've done that, but just like it was with the jetty box in the previous part of the video, uh, you just scroll down through the menu, use the left and right arrows to implement changes. When you're finished, you can scroll all the way through till you get to the top level of that category. Uh, or you can go ahead and just hold the up arrow. That'll take you back to the top of the menu to the MX. Right twice, it'll take you back to TX. Escape back out to the main menu and you're finished using or setting up your, uh, your unit. I'm going to go ahead and show you real quickly a couple of the differences between the two types of Mesin controller. Remember we have a Mesin Lite and a Mesin RPM. Uh, the standard Mesin or Mesin RPM has a much larger heat sink. Um, that particular unit has a larger heat sink and it actually has a couple of cables that you're going to have to get to know. The red is your, your telemetry lead. It's a standard lead that we've used uh, throughout this video, and it's the lead that you would plug into your EXT port or into your expander if you're using the telemetry. 
You have the standard lead, which is what carries your throttle signal and carries the power from the back back to the receiver. And the third lead is a two-wire lead that you'll see here. Uh, it's the same JR plug. Uh, instead of three cables, it's two. Uh, that is the RPM output. Uh, that would be used for you guys that are using this in a helicopter and you're using a fly barless systems governor or using an external governor on, uh, on the helicopter. This would plug in, feed RPM into that unit so it could set the head speed. Uh, that's only featured on the standard mezzan. It'll be indicated on the, uh, the individual unit by the word RPM in the description. Um, and that's, again, that's the standard mezzan or the mezzan RPM. The second unit that we do is the mezzan light. Now, it's a much thinner unit. Uh, you'll notice it's, heat sh it's uh, shrink craft has a much smaller heat sink and has only two leads. It has the same telemetry lead that will be indicated by a red connector and the power and signal lead, which is indicated by a black connector. It doesn't have that second black JR connector with the two wires, it'd be the RPM. So if you're looking for RPM, make sure you don't order a light version. Uh, if RPM is not important to you and it's a lighter application like a fixed wing or an airplane application, uh, the Mezzan light series works just fine. But if you're looking for the RPM output, you're using it in a helicopter, you have a, a heavy-duty application, make sure that you choose the standard Mezzan and not the light. Thanks for joining us uh, on our trip through our Mezzan programming video. If you have any questions, like always, reach out to us either at Jetty USA or Esprit Model, and if, we'll see you next time.